Well, hello again, everyone. This is Clint Finney for another Eastern Ohio Grazing Council update. For those of you who are not aware, our good friend Harry Kenny passed away last week. And this being the week that we would normally do a virtual pasture walk, we decided instead to do a presentation in Harry's honor. See, at NRCS, we have a tradition where when someone retires or moves on, we have a little gathering and invite their family. And we tell stories about what that employee meant to us. And with Harry, we're, we're not gonna get that opportunity, unfortunately. So we thought it best to do a little presentation, letting Harry's family know what he meant to the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council family. So Beth sent out an email to all the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council members and told them to send that email on uh, to other people that have attended Eastern Ohio Grazing Council pasture walks over the years, uh, asking for notes, emails, um, video, voice recordings of what Harry meant to them. And we're gonna, we have compiled them all in this presentation. And we're going to continue to compile them. If we get more over the next several days, weeks, uh, we'll compile them into this video and, and repost the video back out there. Uh, so keep them coming. <clears throat> but while we're all deeply saddened and shocked by Harry's passing, um, we don't want to forget who Harry was. Harry was the first to smile the first to tell a joke, the first to give you a big old handshake. He was a laugh when he needed it and a hug when he needed it more. And uh, We want this sort of presentation in memory of Harry uh, to reflect on who Harry was. So let's get started. As we thought about putting this together, <laughs> we had to think about where, where do we start? And uh, John Borden, I think, had the idea first. Let's talk about where we met Harry and where we where we came to know him. And uh, I thought that was a, a good place to begin. Um, I started working for NRCS in 2002, and Harry had already been working there. He started in 1999. So Harry and I were the, the sort of new kids on the block at that point. Um, everybody else was near in retirement age. And so Harry and I were the young guys uh, and uh, I don't really remember where I met Harry. Harry was a grazing specialist at the time uh, down south of us and uh, met him at some meeting somewhere along the way and Harry and I were, were fast friends. Um, we, we come from around the same place in the world. We spoke sort of the same language. Um, we had the same haircut even and uh, we, we got along really well from the start. I, I, um, and then as time went by, our grazing specialist, Patty Dyer, left and Harry was acting uh, in, in our office for a while. And I think it became apparent to Harry pretty quickly that he didn't really need to come to our office much because I was there and I was able to take up any grazing things. And I know Harry appreciated that because he was pretty thin at that time. As far as coverage goes, he was all over the place. And so I only had Harry over when we needed him. But uh, over the years, Harry would call and always was the pretty much the same um, opening line on the phone. What are you doing? Uh, every time he called, and I always try to think of something funny to say to him. Absolutely nothing, Harry. Just sitting around waiting on you to call, Harry. What are you doing, Harry? Um, to Harry, I was El Clinte. Everybody had a name, and I was El Clinte. What are you doing, El Clinte? Um, and, and Harry always had a reason to call, something NRCS-wise, but uh, in the end, our conversation always rolled around to several things. One was him saying, when are you coming over to help? And my answer was always the same. Whatever you need me, Harry, I'll be there. Uh, and then eventually it would roll around to, to our families and, and what we were doing. And uh, also, you know, to the farm. Uh, Harry and I are both farm boys, both still involved in the farming operations at home. And it would roll around to to our girls, meaning our cows, 
and what the forage was doing at home and, and that was especially special for me because Harry was the only one that was kind of on the same parallel as I was so our, our forage was about the same at the same time so Harry was the one I could call up talk to him about forage and talk to him about what the cows were doing what the cows looked like um, and I, I mean, in all the ways that I will miss Harry, that's one of the things that I'll miss the most is just having somebody be able to pick up the phone and call and talk about the farm. Um, Harry was always the best friend, the best cheerleader, the first to congratulate you. Uh, I, I know my old boss 20 years ago got a promotion and he said, surprisingly enough, Harry was the first email he got of congratulation for that promotion. And, and that was true, Harry almost every time. As I got news of Harry's passing, I took it upon myself to call as many people as I could stand that night and let him know and uh, talk to one of my colleagues that had worked with Harry, um, Chris Catula, and uh, we talked about Harry and about our families and you know my family knew Harry because of the pasture walks. My wife says Harry would always come up to her and kind of give her that little nudge with the elbow at the pasture walks and say, well, we have neat. And, and that was funny because the first time that Harry and Harry had met my wife, I believe was at a pasture walk and she was pregnant at the time for, for our son, Ethan. And, uh, this year we haven't been able to get together and haven't seen each other, but my wife is currently pregnant again, uh, expecting the second son here December 20th. And uh, even even my son Ethan remembers Harry from the pasture walks because Harry, I'd be talking to somebody as I always am, and uh, Harry would take him to go through the food line, and he always, my, Ethan always said something to make Harry laugh. Harry had to come back and tell me what Ethan said. But as as Chris and I were talking, you know, he was trying to explain to his wife who Harry was, and and I hope Chris is sad that I tell his story, but. Harry, he said, Harry was Harry was like Norm from Cheers. Every time Harry walked in a room, everybody stopped and said, hey, Harry. And I said, my old personal thing about Harry was Harry was like on exit of the meeting. Harry was like George Costanza. He had something funny to say, and he pretty much said, I'm out of here, and he left. And, and as I think about that, it sounds bad because it makes Harry sound like one of those two characters, but... Harry worked with a quiet determination that I, I don't know how he did it. Um, I don't know how he got things done, but he did. And I worked with him several times in his office, helping him get ahead. And I would take things in for Harry here. This needs your signature. This needs done. This needs done. And within a couple of minutes, it would be back across my desk and ready for me to go on. Uh, it, it always amazed me. And, and, and just sitting there in the office, you, you saw the way Harry was, you know, he, Harry was a people person. Somebody would come through the door and no matter how busy we were, Harry would just bring him back to his office, sit down, talk with him, not only about conservation, but about other things, whatever was going on. Um, in, in the end, Harry was, Harry was happy if the producer was happy and, and we worked get together well because we were the same in that thought we wanted to make sure the producer was happy and we deal with the paperwork we deal with the the people uh in our agency but we wanted to make sure the producer was happy with with conservation with what we were trying to put in on on their land <laughs> he, he harry loved to go to the field uh he was an educator uh, he he could talk to somebody and and, and give them the right idea without them ever even really knowing they did. I know this because when we started working together, I was having a particular tough time working with my dad at the farm. And I asked Harry to come out, walk the farm with dad and I, and Harry was able to point out lots of things to my dad and get my dad to really think and, and see things the way that I was seeing them. And, and we are better for it. We're better as an operation, as a family, because of Harry being able to come out and visit with us that day if you haven't figured it out yet harry and i shared one other thing and that's that we didn't mind talking and uh when i set out to to do my part of the presentation uh, i i i wanted this picture uh, i think jeff bettinger took it i have no idea who the gentleman is in the picture looks like a mini round baler there too um, but this was harry if i had to think of a picture of harry this was harry 
and I could put so many captions in, in his mouth for what he's saying there. Come on, brother. Uh, ranks in among the top, probably. Um, I, I, I just want to say to, to, to Tracy and Madison and Allison and Harry Sr. and Carol and the entire Kenny family, how much Harry meant to, to not only me, but to my family and to the NRCS family and the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council family uh, in general. Um, we are better people for, for having known Harry. I, I'm a better employee, conservationist, father for, for knowing Harry Kenny. So with that, I'll say, I love you, brother. Hi, I'm Beth Krupsack. Um, I had the privilege of working with Harry for almost 15 years. 
He and I both started our careers working for soil and water districts and got hired into NRCS as grazing specialist. Uh, Harry started several years before me with NRCS, and so when I got when I got started, Harry was assigned to help train me, and he went along with me on my first several field visits and helped me learn the ropes. He made me feel right at home from the very start. It's just how Harry was. He never knew a stranger. He became like a big brother to me, always teasing, goofing around, and sometimes driving me completely crazy, but also always caring. I always looked forward to seeing him and being greeted with a hug. This is just a picture of Harry being Harry. Um, I took this picture of Harry at a pasture walk in 2014, and I never knew that he had actually taken a picture of me taking a picture of him until we were looking through the files and Clint found the picture that Harry had actually taken of me that day. And I just felt like I needed to share it because this was just Harry being his goofy self. I had the opportunity to be acting for Harry because he was often told to be acting in the area office or helping out some other counties. And it kind of put me in a unique position to see how Harry had built relationships with his customers. Um, there was no way I could ever fill his shoes while I was in there trying to help help his people out, but it, it was just amazing to see the relationships he'd built with people and how much they all respected and appreciated him. And I just thought that was another important thing to share about Harry. It was always evident that Harry loved his family. Tracy, Allison, Madison, I know that you knew how much he loved you, but I just wanted you to know that we all knew it too. Harry also loved his cows, so I thought it was appropriate to share this photo of his girls taken at a pasture walk on his rental farm. We will surely miss Harry's contributions to NRCS and the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council, but more than anything, we will miss his presence in our lives.